Hi, it's Wayne here from Adreno Brisbane. And I'm Ian Shields. We're going to bring to you a uh, Adreno Tips today, and uh, the subject is hunting wahoo. Yeah, over the years I've hunted a lot of wahoo, um, mainly in the Brisbane area. Um, a lot of success off the um, Hutchies area and quite a bit off the North Strabog area. Taken a few in the um, bunker group. But most ones I've hunted and had most success with have been local fish. Yep, yep, cool. Now you've got a bit of a reputation. Of that. Do they know you as Doctor Who? Yeah, for a while there <laughs> I used to hunt Wahoo quite often and um, nearly every time we went out we'd bring them back. Um, I just uncanny luck at um, finding them, shooting them and landing them. So they gave me a bit of a hard time here for a few years but now <laughs> I hunt them you know, once or twice a year for a bit of fun um, and trying to you know, take some different people out for a different experience. Yeah, look, didn't you, a couple of years ago, you took one guy out from here and he got a reputation being <laughs> one fish? Yeah, we had a staff member here for a while who was a young fella um, who hadn't done a lot of spear fishing, and um, we took him out on a Dreno spear day and I put him in a really hot spot with a, I mean, probably had a 1.1 Rob Allen gun. Um, he landed on a school of um, wahoo, shot his first ever fish, and it was a 15 kilo wahoo. So we called him one fish for the rest of the time he worked here. <laughs> All right, so the uh, first uh, thing we'll look at here is the gear. How important is the gear? Well, they are real gear testers. They're extremely strong and one of the fastest fish in the sea. And when they're shot, generally they take off very, very hard and there can be a lot of pressure involved. Um, so you need to be very careful to make sure your gear is all up to grade, all up to standard, um, with no weaknesses in your shooting line and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, renowned gear testers, there's no doubt about it. And I think the thing that excites most people about uh, Wahoo is that initial first run, where you put the spear in them and all of a sudden it's almost they're there, and the next thing, pew, it's just a line of bubbles where they were. And yeah. it's the most exciting. They are a spectacular fish in the water. They're probably you know, the largest fish that we can you know, commonly come, come across in these waters. And um, as Wayne was saying, they really light up. They actually get these really bright blue bars down their body. Um, when they're speared and when the fight's on, they are you know, very, very exciting to watch. Um, but they do lose their colour you know, quickly afterwards. So if you're into the photos, try to get them pretty fast. When they're either you know, just in the water or just out of the water, you're going to get the best photos for sure. Yeah, I agree. The classic shots of the way was held on the surface with those beautiful, bright uh, stripes down them. Once you get them out, if they sit in the esky for even 10 minutes, yeah. they pretty much just go grey. OK, and um, do you use slip tips? No, I haven't used slip tips on Wahoo I've hunted. Mainly um, just normal shaft set up or occasionally um, if we're in you know, sharky areas and I, and I want to be able to still hold a gun with me, I'll use a breakaway um, so we can fend off sharks if they're giving us a hard time. But most of the time it's a standard set up with a 1.4 gun, um, twin 16s, 7.5mm shaft and just try and get the fish to come to you nice and close um, and take a nice you know, strong shot and um, then start playing the fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, when I first started chasing them, I did use slip tips and I did use a break. It was in the Coral Sea, and the Coral Sea has a few different things. One is generally the fish are bigger. Mind you, they've been getting some big wahoo over the last couple of years off Brisbane. Yeah, you know. I believe there was one seen recently which someone didn't get. Uh, they didn't get it, but um, they would have been quoted as you know, a 40 kilo fish. Um, and I have seen some big ones. I've seen some big schools. I've seen big schools of small ones at times. Um, one day we took eight you know, wahoo, um, a couple of us. So, um, yeah, and back in the Coral Sea, you know, you're, you're sometimes hunting in, uh, you know, 500, 1,000 metres of water. And uh, that's where you're going to quite often come across the big schools of wahoo. And they sort of hang out there looking, uh, you know, interested in bait fish or whatever can be, you know, hanging around there on the edges of reefs, you know, where it comes up from 1,000 metres up to, you know, almost breaking in, a, in, in less than a K, all those definitely going to be hot spots for wahoo on the, on the coral reef. But uh, so, yeah, I definitely use a breakaway. And same thought, when you, if you used a breakaway, you had the, the barrel of the gun in your hand to be able to fend off sharks if you wanted to, to save your fish. But I can't say in uh, local areas that I've used the breakaway much. It's kind of like a, I'm set up pretty much what I'd be set up with mackerel. And, uh, uh, you know, if I've got... If I need to chase the sharks away from the fish, I've usually with experienced divers, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what gun size do you use, Ian? Uh, my standard gun for blue water, I use a 1.4 Aimrite. 
um, Super, Super Venom um, with a 7.5 mil shaft and standard rubber setup, deadly accurate, got the right power, um, single wrap, I just make sure you, you get close to the fish and a lot of that is getting the fish to come to you. Um, they don't like to be approached quickly, um, so you've got to take your time, be patient and you know, invite them and get them to come to you. Mm, I totally agree. Okay, and what about uh, float and float line? How, how well, heavy do you need it? There is, has been a, a trend where people have been using real guns. Um, I've had some first-hand experience observing a person using a real gun um, on the day that I was using a standard setup. Um, so my, myself, I'll have a 25-foot you know, um, float rope uh, and a, normally a pretty big boy if we're big float, if we're looking for the, the wahoo, um, and just a standard setup. So it's um, nice and strong. Well organised and ready to go, and make sure that you keep your rope clear of yourself. Make sure your rope isn't hooked up or tangled up near you or hooked up, because when you shoot a wahoo, they're going to run really hard for the first you know, couple of hundred metres. Yeah, that's right. You wouldn't want a loop no. put around your finger or something like that. You'd just take it off. Yeah, well, just just on that though, the um, recently I was we were out there drifting over a similar structure. I'm from a a young fellow who used to work here, Wade. Um, he was using a 97mm real gun. I had a standard set up. Um, I observed him getting towed up and down for quite some time with a fish. Um, I was going to kind of help him, but he kept on moving too fast. So I couldn't catch up to him. He did eventually land the fish, um, but in the meantime, I you know, took one, stoned him, had him in the boat while Wade was still getting towed around. So for me, I always use a standard set up with a good float, um, just to, especially for safety as well but more success in landing fish. I have taken a, a couple of wahoo on reels and sometimes one particular one I remember stripped 50 metres of line within 20 seconds. Yeah. And that means 50 metres of line I had out in the water. He was 50 metres ahead of there. Then he dragged me 100 metres. So it was an exciting thing and I guess that's <laughs> what, the, what the, the thrill is. It, it's a bit more exciting. But uh, it's not so controlled. Now, the thing about when you're pulling in uh, metres of, uh, yeah. you know, real line, you've really got to do it right. Uh, if you're going to do it, you cannot just pull them up and have that real line curling up around you or even just behind you. The idea is pull it in and swim to the side so that you leave a trail of it going that way rather than have a stack of line around you because as soon as you get it close, that fish is going to do a circle around you. And he does a couple of those and the next thing you're a mess. And maybe he's dog tired. However, the big bull shark that comes up and has a, has a grab at him, he won't be dog tired and that can... The fish will jump again. Yeah, yeah, and the next thing you're dragged under with... Uh, the, uh, the rig line, yeah. with the, uh, sorry, the real line. So there is a safety point on using a, uh, a, a float rope. It's also the fact that your buddies know exactly where you are all the time. You're not going to get cleaned up by a boat uh, when you've got a float. Well, we hope you're not going to get cleaned up by a boat when you've got a float and a flag above you. So those are definitely safety points to consider. In the Coral Sea, you, you pretty much come across uh, Wahoo on any pressure point where there's a deep water involved. In a feeding situation, you're going to find wahoo wherever the bait fish are. They're just an aggressive feeding type fish. But sometimes in the middle of the day, they're drifting out and they're not particularly feeding, but they'll come over and have a look at you. And so uh, they, you know, there'll be certain points in a reef where you'll find them. Uh, the point, especially with wahoo, is you don't chase them. You let them wander over to you and have a bit of a look at you. And if anything, you fake that you're not interested. So, but actually in the, um, uh, the local area, there's a lot more different places that you're liable to find wahoo turning up. Yeah, well, a lot of success I've had here um, is on a few points with um, using, using flashes quite often. Not all the time, because sometimes you know, the fish don't want too much activity. They'd just rather be quiet. Quite often um, the morning when the fishermen are out there running up and down, that scares a lot of the fish away. So we've had a lot of success early afternoon after a lot of the boats that are trawling have disappeared and the fish are much more settled. They'll swim to the middle of the surface and they'll be more inclined to come in and have a look. Quite often we jump off the back of the boat and there's a wahoo or two just sitting at the back. They're very inquisitive. They'll come up, want to know what the motor, the noise of the motor, want to know what the structure of the boat is. Um, so you can be surprised when you jump in the water. When the current's running the right way, which is north, normally a, um, 
a northwest to a southeast direction. Um, we start about 400 metres up from a point um, in you know, 35 to 40 metres of water, trying to come back on, on the point we're trying to meet, drifting across, um, and quite often that's where we'll find the wahoo in the 25 metres of water, not sitting on the reef, but you know, just circling around the reef a little bit wider. Quite often there's other fish there, there might be surgeon fish, but the just typical rule where there's fish, there's fish. We'll do a dive down, there'll be surgeons, and then a, you know, a wahoo can swim across the top, um, and you just got to be in the right spot. Yep, yeah, I agree. Look, uh, I've come across wahoo at the, at the fish fats in 17 oh. metres of water. Yeah, yeah, we, we shot quite a few, uh, probably four Septembers ago at the inner nearings <laughs> up at um, Rullabar um, in 14 metres of water. There's a massive school there um, where two got taken that day. Wow. Yeah, Sam Cox from here was with us and he shot one that day and another Brendan from the sunny coast got one as well. Yeah, yeah. I've seen them swimming at uh, King's Cliff on a rock hop, yeah, yeah. you know, so uh, you kind of got to be ready for them. Where there's a pressure point, you know, where there's bait fish, you're quite likely to find wahoo. But it's really like the water has to be right. Yeah, well, most of the time I've you know, taken them has been sort of this time of year, May, June as well has been successful. Um, October, November can be successful when you know, we've had southerlies, the water's clear, warmer water has moved in without being too hot. Um, I, don't, I believe they don't like it too hot, 26 degrees. I don't think they really like, but um, most of the ones, um, you know, 22 and a half to 24 and a half has been the, the water temperature I've taken most of the wahoo. Mm. And like blue water? Oh, typically blue, yeah. Mm. yeah. Normally, you know, 15 metres plus, but uh, normally out, you know, out wide in um, you know, water you can't see the bottom, that's for sure. Yep. And what about fads? Have you ever taken them off the fads? Uh, well, one day, Sam Cox and myself, that's when we took about eight wahoo in one, one day um, at a fad off of um, North Stradbroke. It was just one of those days you turned up and uh, we could see them from the boat um, and they were just pr cruising around about 10 kilo wahoo um, and we, yeah, it was a real you know, extraordinary day to um, see so many fish, there was probably 30 or 40 in the water mm. um, and, and we had Kevin with us so we took our full bag limit, we could have taken another 10 or 20 if we wanted to. How important is the shot? Um, last one I shot I stoned, you know, which probably the only one I've ever stoned. Um, I usually you know, head, aim for the, the front end you know, headshot seems to rattle them a fair bit, and behind the head, obviously, you know, a good holding shot. Headshots will you know, get you a good hold as well because it's harder, harder skin through there and harder structure, more bones, so you'll get you a better hold. So normally, um, yeah, the front end of the fish, but preferably right, right up towards the head. Um, that's where I stoned that last one, just mm. you know, right behind. Just here, behind close the, to the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Run, um, he just did the death roll like this in the water, and um, I gathered him up. Yeah. yeah, I've found that. Uh, I've definitely gone for the stone shot, you know, just behind the gills there at the level of the eye generally is what you look at, and that's where the uh, spine goes through. I think it's a good idea is when you strip the, the fillet off the fishes, you have a really good look where exactly the spine goes and uh, compare it to where the eye is and the various other parts, the gill is and things like that. So, you know, when you're back in the water and you're got a fish sitting side on, you don't even have any doubt where you're going to put that spear. You know, I think that's an, an important yep. way to look at it. Now, um, just a little bit more on getting close. Now, I've, uh, you know, a couple of times you see me commenting on the shop that, you know, people will go to the Coral Sea and next thing they've got these huge multi-band rubber guns. I did it myself. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden they see a fish come into vision and they aim up. And the water's so clear, and bang, double rubber, sorry, double uh, wrap, and spear still stops short of the fish. Yeah, well, that's been a, a common trap with um, young fellas I've taken out and um, introduced them to um, wahoo and big fish hunting. Um, certainly, the first few shots, they always fall short. They just don't realise that the, the fish is so big and they think it's close, but it's not. You just, if you're doing that, you just got to make sure you know, you're lining up. Slowly count one, two, three as you're you know, slowly taking in the distance to make sure you get a good shot. So when you think you're ready, count slowly to three, and a good chance you're going to be able to you know, get a good holding shot. Yeah. Look, they're a classic pelagic fish, and I think the important thing is if you can show disinterest and no sudden movements towards them, they are quite happy to have you near them. 
So I think that's very important. And I think if you go to the Coral Sea, don't throw away all that hard-earned experience you've had getting close to mackerel and kingfish and things like that. It's, uh, it's exactly when you want to use it. And uh, if you just use those same techniques, the large wahoo and even tuna will come in uh, quite close and give you a much better shot. So it's a lot to do with your expectation and, and how good your body language is. And patience. Yeah. As you get older, you get more patience. The young fellas seem to want to get in there and take a quick shot and on the edge and trying to get you know, excitement drives in a bit, but slow it all down. The fish will you know, behave how you want it to and um, you have much, much stronger chance of landing a good fish. So when you got the fish on? Uh, well, my technique's been a little bit different. Over the years, I've seen people shoot and quickly release everything and let the fish you know, take a really you know, violent, extremely fast run. Um, that hasn't been the way I've done it. Um, and over the years, I've seen quite a few wahoo come off the shaft. Now, they've been good shots. Um, the fish has run. They've let all the tension go. And for some reason, whether it's the way they twist, um, the spear comes out. That's happened a number of times with Sam as well. Um, so my technique has always been, you know, shoot, release, grab the rope, let the right rope run through your fingers, a, a bit of tension, so you are engaging your flopper straight away, um, and it's just going to hold in there the whole time. So I just let them run for a while, and as they get a bit further out, I just apply a bit more pressure. Normally they start turning, um, and as Wayne said, they, they will circle you. I've had plenty of them just slowly bring them in, they just swim a big slow circle on you. Um, they slowly bleed out, get tired. I can bring them in, and this is a good tip for all large fish. Bring them in, okay, just wait, get nice and close to the tail, grab the tail, and flip the fish upside down. Once you, you know, flip a, a large pelagic fish upside down, doesn't matter how large they are, they virtually put them to sleep. So then you've got him upside down, you can slide your hands up into the gills, get the knife, dispatch him um, in a nice, easy, organised way. Handling large fish in the 20, 25, 35 kilo mark. Um, trying to wrestle them when they've still got their full strength can be very dangerous when you're holding a knife and you've got a spear involved. Um, when you've got teeth, like you know, large mackerel or large wahoo have got. So turning them upside down is a real key to you know, safe handling of the fish. Mm, I agree. Look, talking about the wahoo teeth, uh, recently I talked about mackerel teeth and how sharp they are. Well, mackerel teeth are sharp but wahoo are sharper. And they have got a scissor action on their jaw. Both jaws move. So the up and the bottom jaw both move open like so. And when it comes in, the teeth slide just so close onto each other. So their technique of hunting is they come up and they snap at a bait fish and they cut it in half. They don't try and hold onto it. And then they swim back around and pick up the halves. So uh, their, their teeth are like razors. A friend of mine slid one into a boat and it just nudged his mate who was sitting in the boat and ran down the side of his foot. Well, it just cut the sock and cut his foot wide open. He had to have multiple stitches and it was just, he didn't even notice it happening. Well, I think that just about wraps it up, Ian. Yeah, there's not much else we need to cover. Um, it's just you know, about getting out there in the right conditions and um, use some of those techniques and... Um Enjoy yourself and hopefully land some really good fish. Mm. So from us at uh, Adreno Brisbane, Wayne and... Yep, Ian, and may the fish be with you. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Bye.